As a YouTuber with almost 2 million subscribers, I can tell you that one of the keys to making successful videos is creating clickable thumbnails. In this video, I will show you a fast and easy way to create YouTube thumbnails that will stand out from the crowd. We will make a thumbnail for a video on creating YouTube thumbnails. First, go to express.adobe.com. This online editor will allow you to easily design professional YouTube thumbnails. Start by clicking on YouTube thumbnails from the top row. On the left, you can select a thumbnail from the hundreds of professionally designed templates. But to give you a better understanding of how Adobe Express works, instead, we're going to create a YouTube thumbnail from scratch. The first step is to select the background for your YouTube thumbnail. You can import an image from your computer or use a free image from Adobe Stock. From the search bar, type a keyword. For example, purple, because I want a purple background. From the results, Find an image you want to use in your design and click on it. After you import an image, you can adjust it from the properties column on the right. For example, you can click on this icon to flip the image horizontally to keep the brighter area on the right side. Feel free to experiment with other controls like the blur slider. In this case, we don't need the blur, so I'll disable it. YouTube thumbnails usually perform better when you have your face in them. I would recommend adding your face if it makes sense for your video. To import an image of yourself, click on Photos, then click on Upload Photo. Then select the photo to upload. You can then resize an image by dragging on the transformation handles. From this dropdown, you can select a view percentage and you can hold the spacebar as you drag to pan. When your photo is in place, Click on the Remove Background button. This command will use artificial intelligence known as Adobe Sensei to analyze the image and remove the background. You can refine the mask by using these tools, but it's not necessary in this case. Just click on the check mark to commit the changes. Next, I want to add the Adobe Express logo to this thumbnail. If you're a member of the Creative Cloud, then you have access to libraries. Click on this icon and you can see all your libraries. Under my assets library, I have an Adobe Express graphic. When you click on a library asset, Express will import it into your project. Then you can resize and position it accordingly. Again, holding the spacebar as you drag allows you to pan the image. Next, I want to create a brighter highlight behind the logo. To do so, I will use an Adobe stock image. From the search bar, type light flare, search, and scroll until you find something you like. This one will work great. Import it by clicking on it and use the transformation handles to resize it. To blend the flare with the background, you can use the blending mode. Set the blending mode from this dropdown to either multiply or screen. Multiply will hide bright pixels and keep the dark ones, while screen does the opposite. It hides the dark pixels and keeps the bright ones. This is what we want for this flare. To help the image blend better, go into the Enhancements tab and make the shadows darker and brighten the highlights. Then click on this icon to flip the image vertically and drag it over the logo. Just like in Photoshop, layer stacking order matters. The layers on top cover the layers below. To make the flare appear below the logo, go into the Layers panel, click on the logo and drag it to the top of the layer stack. You can then select it and scale it up. Remember, you can use the arrow keys on the keyboard to nudge the layer into position. I like how the light is hitting my shoulder, but there's a sharp line at the bottom. So we can hide that sharp line by making the image larger to cover the entire canvas. Next, let's work on the left side of the thumbnail. We will add text and an eye-catching graphical element. Let's start by creating a green circle with an up arrow to indicate that views are increasing. From the Shapes tab, search for a circle. This basic circle will work great. You can control the properties such as fill and border from the properties panel on the right. In this case, no border is necessary. But from this icon, you can change the fill color to green. Then search for an arrow. This arrow will work great. Import it by clicking on it and place it into position. You can rotate a layer by dragging on this icon. Then scale it down and place it right over the circle. The on-screen overlays will allow you to center the arrow to the circle. Then change the color to white. If you hold shift and click on both objects, you can scale and move them simultaneously. Next, let's add text to this YouTube thumbnail. 
in my opinion, using two or three words works best. You have to make sure all the elements are big enough to be visible across all devices. These words should either offer a benefit or spike curiosity. You never want to repeat the title on the thumbnail and only use text if it makes the thumbnail more clickable or interesting. To add text, you can click on this icon. The first option allows you to add your own text and you can style it any way you like. Or you can start from one of the text templates. Scroll down and under Education, click on More. From here, click on this template. I'm going to drag it over to the left. This group has several text layers. You can click on them to activate them and adjust them from the Properties panel on the right. First, delete the date and time by clicking on the Delete icon. Then, edit this text layer. Simply type the word More. Then, under Shape, change the color to black. Here's a handy keyboard shortcut. You can duplicate a layer by holding the Alt key on Windows, that's the Option key in the Mac, as you drag. Double click on this duplicate layer to enter the edit text mode and type the word views with an exclamation mark. Then you can make the text larger. With your keyboard, enter 120 and hit enter or return. Move the text layer to the right and place it into position. To make this bottom text layer stand out, change the background color to red. Next, hold shift and click on the circle and arrow to activate them and scale them down to fit right over this space. You may require a few tries to get it right. To make this design more appealing, increase the text size of the word more and adjust it accordingly. Once you have something that works, hold shift and click on all the layers. With all the layers active, press Ctrl G on Windows or Command G on the Mac to put everything into a group. You can then move and scale all the layers as one. Here's a pro tip. When you're creating a YouTube thumbnail, make sure to view it at 25% or even smaller. That way you can get an idea of how the YouTube thumbnail will look on mobile or on a search results page. If you're looking at the YouTube thumbnail at 100%, it might be misleading, so it's best to look at it in a smaller view to make sure all your elements are visible and legible. At this point, fine-tune the details until you get something you're happy with. To export your YouTube thumbnail, click on the download button and download it as a JPEG.